Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna paint this koi fish while finding a little bit of a meditative space for ourselves within the painting process. Before we get started, make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can paint with me every week. Now let's get started. Okay, today I'm gonna use my black Fredericks canvas pad. Now remember, this is actually a sheet of canvas. It's not paper with a canvas texture. So as you can see on the back, that is the canvas. And I just use it right here in the pad. It's got a really rigid cardboard in the back so that it keeps, it just stands straight up and down. I don't even have to take it out of the, out of the package. Now today's painting, I want to be really kind of free form and seriously relaxing for you. So we are painting a fish, but really what I'm doing with this fish is just kind of using it as a way to relax. So I don't want you to stress out about the fish too much. Fish come in lots of different shapes and sizes and colors, so don't feel like you have to make yours look exactly like mine. Drawing the fish is gonna be very, very simple. I'm gonna use my white chalk pencil. Use whatever you have, whatever you prefer. And I want to give a very delicate kind of a kind of a curve and just find the curve that works for you. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. So I'm just going to kind of start here and bring it down and then I can change that a little if I want. Just smooth that out there. I'm not worried about excess chalk lines because I am gonna just paint over everything. Let's go ahead and do the, the face of the fish. It's just a little shape like that. Nothing too fancy. And this is gonna be the center of the fish all the way down. So I'm gonna bring it out a little wider here where the head is. And you can keep working this shape until it's exactly what you want. Please don't, you know, do an initial shape and then think, well, I guess that's what my fish looks like. You know, if it's not what you want your fish to look like. It's gonna get a little more narrow. So here's my center line, I'm following this line. It's gonna get a little more narrow as it comes around and then just kind of meet back up. Let's do the other side. widen this just a little bit right here. Not that much. Make sure you stand back to tell if it's what you really want. Just get rid of some of these extra lines so you can see what I'm looking at. I can see exactly where I want my fish and all of that, but you might not be able to, so. I'll just erase some of those. See, it's really just an elongated teardrop. And if you really wanted to, you could do two of them that kind of, you know, were curling around each other. I just wanted to do one because like I said, I'm just kind of using it meditatively today. I just want to kind of get lost in the colors and the, the little details and everything. And that's all I want from this fish. Now the fins, I'm not gonna worry about right now because I'm gonna actually paint the fish and then I'm gonna paint the background. And once the background is dry, then I'm gonna come back and paint the fins. So that's why I didn't draw them in. So don't worry about those right now. Now to paint in the fish, I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush. 
And I'm gonna start with Titanium White and Payne's Gray. You can use Mars Black here if you want, if you don't have Payne's Gray. Be very, very careful with it. I'm just using Payne's Gray to kind of tone down the white so that I can get bright, bright whites and whites that are just a little bit more shadowy. And if I use Mars Black, I could very easily make my fish way too dark. And the Payne's Gray has a little hint of blue to it, which is gonna be a nice contrast to the orange. So I've wet my brush in my jar and just kind of shook off the extra water. And I'm gonna start by loading up with some white. Just pull some white out, kind of smush my brush in it to get it into the bristles. You can roll your brush a little as you load it to kind of help it keep its shape. I'm gonna grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and that's not very much Payne's Gray, but if that were Mars Black, that color would be way too dark. See how soft that color is. And we'll just kind of start here up in the head area. And I do have a little bit of matte medium. I don't think matte medium is necessarily required for this painting. So if you don't have it or you don't want to use it, that's fine. I'm just going to kind of start laying this in somewhere. Carving out the shape of the fish's body. Now when I look at it, I am feeling like this area here where I'm painting is the underside of the fish. And you know, the center line is kind of where its spine is. But I might end up moving that center line over a little bit. We'll see. Just kind of find the shape of the fish. I'm not gonna paint it all in with this white gray color. I'm gonna leave lots of room. I just picked up some white there. I'm gonna leave lots of room so that I can get some of that bright orange in. See how that color wasn't very pale, but with the pure white on top of it, or it wasn't very gray, but with the pure white on top of it, you can definitely see a difference. I'm just kind of dab that up, pull it up into there. Little dabbing brush strokes so you can see you can definitely see the brush strokes. You don't need to try and cover them. It'll just help you get the look of like fish scales. A little bit more white, still have the gray on here. And well, let's see, I'm gonna pull a little bit more gray in because on the belly, I want it to be just a little bit darker, a little bit more in shadow. So it's still kind of a medium light gray. down the belly there and then just kind of break it up one thing I'm gonna do with my shape to help it seem like a fish like a rounded fish is rather than you know bringing some of the color just up like that I'm gonna kind of arc it so instead of you know doing my color like that I'm gonna do my color kind of like that and that's gonna help bring a little bit of kind of a rounded shape to the fish. And anything you don't like here, anything that you put on that is the wrong color or the wrong shape, don't sweat it right now. You can change anything as we add our layers. I'm just gonna put a hint of that over here. See how I also arced that. I didn't just bring it straight, you know, 90 degrees to this line. I kind of arced it. Let's just continue down the body. I've still got that kind of medium light gray. And here, because we haven't painted the background yet, you don't have to worry about going outside of your shape. So if I go like that, meh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. And can you see the brush stroke I'm using? It's just kind of like a bounce. Sometimes I'll go flat. You know, a, a smaller bounce is gonna get me a dot. A bigger bounce is gonna get me kind of a wide line. Kind of experiment and see what you like the best. Let's get a little bit over here on this side. Maybe we'll kind of 
bounce that up in here. Maybe it connects with this bit. Right about where I'm going to put the spine. And just to kind of make myself a mental node. That's my new center line. And it'll meet up with that one. That'll give the fish a little bit of a, a bend. So you probably can't see that real well. I just dotted a little extra line. It'll all be covered up. Let's just brighten some of that a bit. I love this canvas pad. It's so smooth. Like it's got a nice texture to it, but it's really smooth to work on. If you guys have wanted to try the Fredericks canvases, I recommend maybe trying the canvas pads first. I love, love, love the canvases, but the canvas pads, you know, it's a little bit more economical as far as, you know, how many you get for the price. I just love these canvas pads. They're my absolute favorite. They're super easy to frame. You just buy a frame and stick it in the frame and <laughs> that's really all there is to it. Now, if you're not sure what a koi fish looks like, just get online and look at some pictures and you'll see they all look different. There's no reason that you have to use the same colors as me or, you know, try to get your, your textures or your patterns the same as I do. There's a million ways that you can do a koi fish. I'm going to pull a little bit more of that white up into there. And maybe back down to this side again. See how I've just got a little bit of just a variation in my whites. Everything still appears pretty white. I don't have anything that's like, you know, terribly gray, but just enough that it kind of, you know, adds a, a shimmer to our fish, I think. Pull a bit of that up here to the, the spine and maybe back down. I'm just kind of making it up as I go, guys. I don't have a reference photo. I'm just feeling what I want this fish to look like, and that's what I want for you to do. I think that's a good start. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the white off of my brush, and we'll move on to our oranges. So for the orange in my fish, I am gonna be using a new color that we haven't used before, and that's quinacridone burnt orange. Please remember, like I said, you do not have to use the same colors. This is not a color you can mix. So if you don't have it, maybe use some burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is pretty close. It's just not as vibrant and you know as intense as this color. You could just end up adding a little bit more red to your orange to make it a little bit deeper. So if you don't have this color, please know it's okay. You can use whatever you have. Experiment and find out what you think looks best. I've been wanting to use this color for quite a while and the fish painting came to me and I decided that is going to be the perfect time to use that color. Look at how beautiful that is. It's just a really warm, rusty red brown. It's very transparent. So I'm just loading up with some of that. A little bit of matte medium, you can just use water if you like. And my white is not fully dry and that's perfectly okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna carve out that shape there. See, I overlapped my white. That's okay. And if some of the white picks up and mixes, that's okay too. I'm doing the same type of thing, just kind of that little bounce. See like that? Bounce it into the white. What it's going to help do when it layers over the white is just give us some more values. If you try and keep it perfectly separate from the white, then it's just going to look kind of squished. So as we do this, the little bounce is very repetitive motion. It can be a little bit, you know, like I said, meditative. So. I want you to just think about, you know, the, the motion that you're doing. Do not judge your fish. 
This poor fish, he's nowhere near ready to be judged yet. So don't, just enjoy the process. And that white's still wet, so I did pick up a little bit of it. That's okay. I like watching this fish kind of come to life, you know? When you start out and he just looks like a weird shape you think how am I gonna make that look like a fish and then as we go and it starts to take on the characteristics of a fish that's really exciting And if at any time I decide I don't want something to actually be white, I can make myself a note by just painting over it. And I think painting is really kind of magic in a way, right? You're both the creator of something, right? You're creating something that has not existed until that moment. And that's a really, I think that that's a powerful thing. If you think about it like that, that can make you feel very powerful. You had the power to create something that did not exist. But at the same time, you know, a painting can really take on a life of its own and create itself seemingly without you. You may have an idea about what you want to create, but ultimately sometimes the painting creates itself and it almost seems to just kind of use you as a vehicle to do that and in that way I think that's kind of magical too you know you get to be the conduit for something else to kind of bring something into existence maybe that sounds creepy I don't mean it to sound creepy Sometimes our creativity, I guess what I'm saying is, sometimes our creativity almost seems to come from a place other than our heart or our head. You know, it seems to be something all its own that you're just really allowing to happen, not really making happen. And I like that. And I think that when you can find that, you know, when you feel like you're just kind of observing the process, that that's kind of when you're in the zone, you know, the zone. There. All right, now I have some cadmium orange. I haven't washed off my brush. I'm just gonna grab some cad orange and if I think that that's too bright for right now, I can mix a little bit of this quinacridone burnt orange into it. And I'm really gonna do a very similar thing. And I have not let this dry. So again, that quinacridone burnt orange is still wet. There may still even be white in here that's wet. I'm just going to introduce some of it. I don't think I'm going to put it everywhere. We'll see. I'm just going to kind of see what happens, like I said. As I start filling it in, I am going to keep the really bright colors a little bit closer to the spine and let some darker colors travel down the side a bit. I 
still just using a mixture of both of them not real you know worried about how the mixture is if it's a little more on the the quinacridone side or a little more on the orange side none of that matters to me still run some over the white and this cad orange is much more opaque than the quinacridone orange so as I start going over white and things like that, it'll start to cover it. But don't worry about that. If you cover too much of your white, we are gonna go back with our white in a little bit. Not covering all of that burnt orange either. I'm leaving it exposed in a lot of places. So if you've never experienced being in the zone, you know, while you're painting, I kind of want you to practice that right now. And the way I practice, you know, getting into the zone is by kind of what I already mentioned, by observing the painting, not by, you know, forcing the painting and being in here and being like, oh, it has to look like this. Dang it, that color's not right. This isn't right. I need to change this. That's not observing. That's, you know, actively painting and, and worrying about the outcome. But if we're gonna do, you know, this painting meditatively, then you can't do that. I mean, certainly I'm, I'm you know, making decisions. I'm like, okay, I think I want it a little darker right here. And so that's just kind of like a, a quick decision I made in my mind. And so how I'm gonna make that darker there right this minute is just by not taking the orange over it too much. And if I do take the orange over it, then I don't worry about it. I just say, like, let's say, I do actually want it darker right here. But if I go and I take the orange over it, that's okay. I know that I want it a little darker there and I'll worry about it later. But I'm just kind of watching this fish come into being, you know? And you, you, you observe what's happening by not judging what's happening, if that makes sense. You know, just decide, oh, I want it a little lighter here blop there's a lighter color okay whether it's right or wrong it's now lighter and let's see I think I'm gonna go back into my orange my burnt orange darken this color a little and like I said before about I can make something darker later well there now I just darkened that spot a little and right there Okay, I washed off my brush. Let's start putting a little bit of that white back in. So the, you know, act of observing what's happening is more about making a decision, following through with that decision, and just accepting whatever happens in that moment. Okay, so it's not gonna be, oh, I'm gonna do white now. Oh, I messed up this white. Now I have to stop and I have to fix that. Nah, if I, feel like I messed up the white, I'll come back to it later. Actually, what I do wanna do is pull a bit of that Payne's gray in. I'm gonna get a very thin amount of this gray on my brush. So I'm gonna come over here and just kinda of wipe some of it off. So I don't have a lot of paint, but my brush has a base of that gray color. Now I'm gonna come in and just get a little smear of white on one part of my brush. Now what that's gonna do where I put that gray on there is it's gonna help ensure I don't just get pure white and start layering white over everything. And some of this may still be wet. I may pick up some of that orange and that's okay. So see if I blop that way, I get a little of that gray. If I turn it around, I get a little of that white. 
And those little dashes that I'm doing, they kind of help start building that look of scales. And just pull a little piece into there. Hopefully that's not bouncing so much that it's hard for you to watch. I do want it nice and bright right here on the front of his face. And maybe let's just pull a little bit in like that. I just like to break up the shapes. Yeah, see that's that orange is still wet. So it is blending just a little bit. And I think that that's okay. Just a little bit in there. Maybe a hint over here. And I'm gonna keep a little of that gray in. Whenever I feel like I'm not getting any gray, I'm just painting things pure white. I just reload with it a little bit and then come back in to that little point of white. I like that just a little bit of that white is picking up just a little bit of that orange. And we're gonna keep going. Just dash that right there because I don't wanna lose that darker gray on the belly. a little matte medium to pick up some of the paint that's still on my brush and put it down. See where I painted over most of that white? I just brought it back. And maybe we'll add just a little going down his spine here. And I know that I can get rid of any of that if I don't like it. So I can experiment here. And I know a lot of times, especially when you're doing tutorials, you probably don't experiment a whole lot. You know, when you're doing a tutorial, you have an end goal in mind. You want a painting that looks as much like the video that you're watching as possible. But I really want to encourage you to you know, experiment. There's no reason your painting has to look like mine. You know, and I tell people all the time that when I paint something more than once, my painting doesn't look like mine. You know, I've painted this fish a couple of times because I was trying to work out just a few different ideas. You know, did I want to do it this way or that way or these colors? And then I did one that was pretty much exactly what I'm doing now, but my painting doesn't look like that one either. So there's no reason that your painting has to look like mine if my painting's not even gonna look like mine. And I would show you that painting as a demonstration, but I ended up painting over it with something else already, so it doesn't even exist anymore. That's just what I do. I paint over things a lot. But I'm really happy with how this fish is turning out so far. I am losing a little bit of that gray and I just feel like I'm adding too much pure white. So I'm just gonna pick up a hint of that gray 
just dash it in there and then I can dash some white back over it and it'll just start to look like a little bit of a shimmer. Remember, we talked about this in the owl. The way to make your white look really bright is to have something darker with it. And the way to make your darks look really dark is to have something brighter white with it. And so that's why that little bit of gray on my brush is so helpful because otherwise the white, it wouldn't necessarily look real bright. It would be white, but it wouldn't, you know, look shimmery. It would just look like flat white but because it has a little bit of gray under it, that helps. See, I just picked up some gray there. I'm just dashing it around this side because maybe there's a bit more of a shadow here. Just my gray, we're pretty bright white right here, so I'm just gonna dash some of that gray in. and then pick up a little smear of white and just dot it over it in places. I'm not trying to get rid of all of that gray. Some koi fish, if you look at them, they're almost solid color. They might just be, you know, kind of a solid red with a little bit of white on the face or maybe solid orange with black spots and very little white. All right, let's keep going. I did take a little bit of a break, so this is dry, but it doesn't really matter if it's wet or dry. I'm still using my number 10 round. And now I'm gonna go just a little bit more into the cad orange. So this is pretty much straight cad orange. I may, I may or may not add a little of that burnt orange in there. And I'm gonna start lightening up some areas. Now, this color is not necessarily about, you know, like a highlight. These fishes, they can have all kinds of colors in them. So, don't worry about, you know, light source or trying to put this in a place where you feel like it would be the brightest. This is just the color on the fish. I am gonna add a color in a little bit that will kind of help it look like light source, a little reflection. But not right this minute. I did pick up a hint of that orange just to break that up, just a little bit. Kind of the same way we did with the, the gray in the white. A little bit of matte medium there just because I like the softer transition of color I get but like I said you can do it without matte medium you could probably use a little bit of water if you like I like this dark spot I hadn't really planned on having any seriously dark spots in here but now that I see that and I really like it I'm gonna leave it I'm just gonna dash over some of this. I really like the way he's looking. I am just keeping a little of that burnt orange in there. And again, just kind of watching what happens, you know? And that makes, that makes painting so much more enjoyable for me, you know, when I just kind of observe what happens. So if you saw my video, the, the time-lapse video that we did a couple weeks ago, where I was just kind of talking about fear, and I said that, you know, when I am painting for myself, I don't allow fear. So I'm not afraid that my painting isn't going to turn out the way that I want it to. Because the way that I do that is by observing, like I was telling you. I just kind of watch 
and see what happens. And if I'm just watching, then, you know, it, it makes me a little bit more accepting of whatever it is that does happen. I don't get quite so hung up on, you know, oh, this isn't turning out the way I want it to because I feel like the painting at that point is kind of doing its own thing. And I'm really just watching to see. I brought that down just a little bit more there. I brought just a little of that orange in there. So if you find that you are the kind of person who, you know, you no matter how hard you try, you really stress out while you're painting, then I want you to try that. You know, just watch. Watch what happens. That doesn't mean that there's, you know, no decision making going on. I'm absolutely making decisions. But it's more like directing somebody else to do it that that sounds that sounds strange so what I mean is you know if you told me oh make it lighter right up here so technically you made the decision and it's lighter up there because you made that decision but I did it and you didn't have any control over how I did it you just watched me do it so I kind of want you to do that same thing decide oh, I want it lighter right here on the spine and a little darker toward the edge all right so that's the decision that I made and now I'm just gonna kind of watch it happen I'm gonna start doing it and if it's not exactly what I had in mind none of that matters I'm just gonna watch it happen So I think let's kind of make that our motto, at least for today. Observe, don't obsess. No obsessing here. Now, while you're painting your fish, be thinking about how you might want to do the background. I'm going to go super simple on my background. And that's because I really want the focus of my painting to be the fish. I really want the fish to be dramatic and stand out. I don't feel like I need a bunch of, you know, like fancy river rocks or anything like that but this is your painting that you're doing, so you do it however you want. And if you wanna add some fancy river rocks, you can absolutely do that. And you can still do it, you know, after the fact, like we're gonna do here. You don't have to do it before the fish. And, you know, again, I'll probably get asked, you know, can I paint the fish, or can I paint the background first and then the fish on top of it? You can do that however you like, 
I chose to do my fish and then the background because I'll have a much easier time cleaning up around him. So like I did this little line here just to demonstrate that for you. And I know that doing these like little dashes, I can get out of control and easily take that off into there. And I don't want to have to worry about that if I've got a background that I've already painted and is beautiful and I don't want to mess up. That and chalk can sometimes stain a canvas. If I'm going to paint over it, it doesn't even matter. All that chalk will be gone. So you can do it whatever, however you're the most comfortable. Okay, I've cleaned off my brush and now I have some yellow oxide or yellow ochre. Some companies call it yellow ochre, some call it yellow oxide. Or any yellow you like. It doesn't have to be this same yellow. So I just have a little bit on here. It's really not a ton. And I'm going to be kind of selective about where I put it. I really want a good amount of it on his head because that's kind of where you're going to, you know, go look first, right, is his head. So I'm going to dash that on there. And again, it can cover anything. It can go outside of the shape. I will start pulling a bit of it down here, mostly toward the spine, because the color I'm gonna put on top of this yellow oxide is gonna be my highlight color. And I really want that highlight to be intense along the spine. So see how I'm just kind of starting at the spine? There's a little blop of it there, and then I just kind of break it up. But put it wherever you want. If you want a really bright spot right there, try that out. See what happens. Don't judge it. Just do it. Remember during the, the owl last week, I believe it was the owl where I talked about, you know, save your corrections for last. So as you're going along, you know, make a decision. Like I said, if you decide I want it, lighter right here. I don't want that dark spot. Go ahead and fill that in. And if you look at it afterwards and you're like, oh, actually, I hate that. That's not what I want at all. It doesn't matter. Just leave it for now. Correct it later. And in fact, a lot of the way that I do this when I'm painting kind of meditatively is I won't even look really at <laughs> what I just did. So I know that sounds weird. You know, I decide I want a brighter hair. Okay, there. I plopped it down, I broke it up because that's the brush stroke I'm looking, but I'm not standing back to look at it to decide, is that actually what I wanted? Does that look the way I want? I'm not doing that. I'm just putting it down and moving on to the next part. You know, if you spend too much time and energy on a particular piece, you know, really looking at it and trying to get that brush stroke to be just right, then that's when you overwork things. And that's why I work quickly sometimes. You know, I, I hear all the time from you guys, you make it look so easy. Well, part of why I think it looks easy when I'm doing it is because I'm treating it like it is. I'm, you know, plopping it down and leaving it alone. I'm not sitting there going, Oh, got to get that spot exactly the way I want it. I'm not doing that at all. I'm saying I need yellow there. There, there's yellow. Is it perfect? Is it exactly right? Who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not, I'm not really paying attention to it. Now let's get a little bit of white and mix it in there. Get a lighter color. Let's come in here with this color and now see my brush strokes are smaller. There's still those little blobs, but they're a little bit smaller. They're not covering everything. And this is where I'm going to start getting that kind of reflection and shine. 
I'm not giving him that really slick, wet look because I kind of picture him being underwater. And when fish is underwater, it's not gonna have a lot of that, you know, ultra glossy look to it. That's more when it's out of the water. But if you wanted to do your fish out of the water, you could put those like bright white, kind of streaky lines on him if you like. Not too bad. I'm going to mix a little extra yellow in here so it's not quite as pale. And I'll just bring a bit of it down into here. I'm not doing it across the entire area, just wherever I really want to kind of make something pop a bit. Just zoom me out there a bit so you can kind of see how it's all working together. I am going to brighten him up quite a bit here just because I feel like if he's kind of turned, that this might be catching the same light that's kind of hitting the top of his head. But once I've done it, if I stand back and look at it and I think, nope, then I'll change it then. All right, I haven't cleaned off my brush, but I'm gonna go in and just poke the tip of the brush right into the white, just a little bit. And this is where I'm gonna start kind of popping in a few of these brighter highlights. Again, it's the same brush stroke, really. It's just very tiny little dabs. See that? Tiny, tiny bit. Mostly keeping this right along the spine, but occasionally I break it out. If you get a spot that's too big and too, you know, blobular like I did right there, that's okay. I'm just going to go like that and break it into that white spot. Maybe it's just a little piece of that. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I'm going to do that there too. I don't really like that color. So see, just dash some of that white over it and it's all perfectly okay. Right back to my little shines. Even kind of blend that one so you almost can't tell where that section of color starts and where the white next to it stops. Just doing the exact same thing here. Just running some of this bright color here and there. Just little tiny bits. Another thing I can do if it's too bright somewhere is just, you know, I've still got this gold on my brush, so just go right back into it and kick it back a little. See that? Easy. Nice bright spot right there. 
soon as I'm done with this white, then I'm gonna stand back and kind of look at it as a whole, decide if there's any little bits of color that I don't like, if I need to change anything. But this whole time, all I'm doing is making those little decisions, like we talked about, and just doing them without really considering it, without really looking at, you know, how it looked after the fact, just doing it. Because I'm confident that I can change anything. You might not be confident that you can change anything just yet, but if you allow yourself to, you know, make mistakes like we've talked about before, then you give yourself the opportunity to learn how to change things and it's only when you have to change something that you learn that you can change anything. So, you know, you guys who always tell me that you're afraid to make mistakes, trust me when I say that you learn the most when you make mistakes. You can't learn properly if you don't make mistakes. And if you let the fear of making mistakes stop you, then that's the only way that I can guarantee that you will never learn anything. When I stand back and look at him right now, I'm actually pretty happy with his coloring. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the background and then we'll get his fins on him and then I might decide that I wanna make some changes. But right now, I think the only thing I might do is come back with some bright white and just kind of pop some of these white areas a little. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with them. Okay, so now we're gonna paint the background and I've got my Payne's Gray, a little bit of ultramarine blue and my white. And you can use any colors you like. I chose these because they'll be soft and subtle, but that blue color is a nice contrast to the oranges that we have in the fish. So I'm gonna start with some Payne's Gray and some blue. And every time I go back for color, it will be a little bit different. Both of these colors are very transparent, which is nice because then I won't end up getting like bright blue if I don't want it. I'm gonna get the tiniest poke of white in there. And I'm gonna use matte medium, but again, you don't have to. To cover something like this, you can come back with some black if you like. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and just kind of cut in. Start cleaning up the shape of the fish a little bit. And I want a really kind of a scattery, in fact, I decided earlier that I wanted it a little bit lighter, right around the fish. So I am gonna make a lighter color. I might have to come back to this part because it's wet. Let's just get that on there for a second. Break it up so I don't have those long streaky brush strokes. Cause I'm gonna try something that I hadn't planned on doing. And I'm just gonna kind of scrub it out. Experiment with different brush strokes and find out what you like the best. See that cardboard on the back, it's pretty strong. I mean, it's wobbling a little bit because I'm, you know, putting some pressure on my canvas, but I'm not afraid that it's not gonna hold. Right over that chalk and there it goes. Yeah, I'd actually planned on doing this background quite a bit darker. And I think for the most part, it is gonna be darker than this. It's just kind of right here in this area. I wanted it a little bit lighter because I'm gonna try something.
I'm not worried about the chalk line where the tail fins are gonna go. Not quite as light on this side. I feel like I had a little bit of a bump in the fish right there. So I'm cutting that little bump off to smooth out his body. Cover up the orange, break up that line. Just relax into this process as well. I know I've been talking about, you know, using art meditatively a lot this year. And I hope that, you know, especially those of you who feel like you struggle a lot, I hope that it helps you to, you know, think about painting a little bit differently. That's my goal with all of it. Because, you know, we should be painting for ourselves. We should be painting for our own enjoyment. We shouldn't be painting because we don't have enough stress in our life. We need to create more. Don't paint for that. I know the fish looks so strange without fins. The most part now, I don't think I'm gonna pick up any more white. There's still some on my brush. I don't know, maybe I will here and there. See if I put a little pressure, I got some white in this corner here. Little scrubby motions like that will help blend into the previous color. Nice and dark down here at the bottom. Because this canvas is already black, I don't have to stress too much about, you know, trying to cover everything. I can even just take a little matte medium right here. I haven't put any paint and just you know, streak what's on my brush or blend out any line that I get. And that's it. I don't have to cover this whole canvas. And we do get brush stroke marks, you know, where it's lighter because the Payne's gray and the blue are so transparent. But if you go over it again later, like once it's dry with just a little bit of another color with different brush strokes, it will cover it. So if you have a lot of brush strokes like I have right here, don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. Don't spend a bunch of, you know, wasted energy trying to go in there and cover those. Just trying to pull a hint of that lighter color out here. Just trying to keep the, the <laughs> cover of the pad from flapping around and making a bunch of noise. I could probably put a piece of tape on it, but. Kind of scribble that up there. We'll let it fade out in that corner. I don't even need to put any color up there. Let's just get rid of that chalk, clean up this shape. 
then around the nose and we're done with the background. Remember when you're painting around a shape like what I'm doing right here and you're trying to get a nice clean line you don't want to go like this around the shape. You don't want to go like that because as you push harder we'll do it on the plate as you push harder the bristles get whiter see that and so if you push hard and it flares out you might go into your fish so you want to use the tip like that and see I get a nice crisp edge a little bit of a bump on the nose right there gone little bit more white in there because it's going to blend in with this section that has some white in it. Just a little scribble to break up that line. And come back in here it's pretty close to the same color just kind of scribbling with the tip of my brush a bit and see it helps get rid of those brush stroke lines I don't even have to worry about them Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna let this dry completely because I don't wanna pick up any of these colors when I do the fins. You know, standing back and looking at this made me realize that I do wanna do the background a little bit different, just really in the way that it's shaped. So I'm gonna pull a little bit more of this type of color down this way. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. But that's what I was talking about. You know, don't, don't waste your time making sure that everything is exactly the way you need it in the first place. Just decide on something, start doing it, and you can change it later if you need to. So I'm just gonna kind of start scattering this color through here. Remember the tip of the brush, just kind of squidge it back and forth and that helps break up brush stroke lines. Just more of my blue and Payne's gray. Ooh. There we go. I keep just picking up blue and Payne's gray so that it can fade out over here. Little matte medium there. Much better. I'm liking that much, much better. And I 
get a little bit of that color going on up here. Then I'm gonna hit it with my blow dryer real quick, get it nice and dry, and we'll do our fins. The fins are gonna be pretty quick, not too terrible, not too difficult. A little bit of that darker color. Just take away a bit of this glowy color here. I'm not trying to get rid of it altogether, just push it down a little bit. So I'm just picking up the blue and Payne's gray. There's still a little white on my brush, and of course, the lighter color that's already on the canvas that's going to glow through. I'm not trying to get rid of all of it. Just mute it a little. Okay, I hit that with my blow dryer, so it's dry now. And I'm gonna go to my 5 8 inch filbert. I wet it in the jar and then I just kind of tapped it on my towel. Now, I kind of lied, you might want matte medium for this part. Uh, technically, you could probably do it with just water. Just make sure that you use a spray varnish afterwards because we're gonna thin down that white paint quite a bit. And let's go ahead and do the fins up here. Decide where you want them. I think they look the best to me with the shape of my fish, maybe right about here, somewhere in, you know, this area. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of white. See how much white I grabbed? It's not a ton of paint and a good amount of matte medium and mix those together. I want a very thin color, maybe just a tiny bit more white than that. You can tell how thin the white is See, it's pretty transparent. My brush doesn't look like it's coated in white paint. What I'm gonna do is decide where I wanted those fins. Use the, the rounded part of my filbert to touch right there. I'm gonna press flat and just kind of bring it out. See how I kind of curled my brush a little bit as I went? So that, and then as I brought it down like that, I slowly rolled it to the edge. Okay, I didn't put any pressure, I'm not mushing it. I just went from this rolled up to the edge and that's how I get that nice shape. I mixed up some more, let's widen it a little bit. So I'm gonna do the same, start in the same place, press flat, bring it, slightly roll it to get a nice wide shape that ends at a point. And over here. Now this one is kind of hiding behind the body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the body. I know that's gonna look weird. Bear with me, you'll understand what I'm doing here in just a second. Actually make sure that you're going directly across from the other one. So I'm gonna press flat and I'm gonna roll it as well. Now I'm gonna take a damp, clean brush and just wipe that away. All right, let's do the tail. Exact same mixture, same brush. And I'm gonna get kind of fancy with my tail here and I've got the room. So I'm gonna use the tip of the filbert right there along the edge of the tail. Press flat, bring it around just kind of like that. And you can make it as, you know, flowy and long as you absolutely want to. 
And this may not be what a koi fish tail even looks like, but you know what? I don't even care. Because I think I like that. I'm going to break this up just a little. We are going to add a little bit of detail. But we want this to dry a bit first. They do have little fins along their back here and a small one on their belly. And you can leave those off if you like. I might end up removing mine, but I'm going to start out with it. It's right here on the spine where I had, you know, kind of set that aside. I'm just going to put a little bit. See how thin and transparent this color is. That's really what you want. You don't want a real intense white here. don't hate it, but I don't think I like that shape. So just a clean, damp brush. And I'm going to take the shape out a little bit. I think I like that better. And just a little bit of one right there. I feel like I want to make these ones just a little bit bigger. Just intensifying the color a little bit on a few of these. I'm going to go to my number two round and I'm just going to load up with white. Well, maybe some matte medium. Just white paint. And I'm going to come into the fins here and just kind of, you know, make a few little lines. Some of them you'll be able to see better than others. Just to fancy up his fins a little bit. Let's do that on the other side too. Nice fat line there at that top edge. And everything else can be really thin and kind of sketchy. It can go outside of the shape. Do that a bit here. See how really it's just that first line that I took care to get just right because we want this part to be a little bit a little bit more solid than everything else. And then through here, I'm just really kind of sketching little indications of the texture of his fins. And same thing here. Ooh, looks like I might have overworked my paint a little bit. I have a little piece right there, so I'll just put a little line over it. We'll attach that to his body there. And same with his tail here. Kind of a nice dark white line right there. That just kind of thins out and 
scatters. Spend as much or as little time here as you want. All right, let's finish up the face. I'm still using my number two and white, and we're gonna give him little, little whiskery bits. See, just a little thin line like that. Just a suggestion of one on the other side. I cleaned off my brush and I just picked up some Payne's Gray, and now we're just gonna give him really a suggestion of an eye. And I can already kind of see where I feel like that would be. So I'm just doing like a little oval. I'm not gonna get crazy with detail here. I felt like the eye was already being suggested there. So just a little dark oval. Cleaned off my brush again, got some more white. We'll just take some white right under the eye there to really show it off. Maybe around it a little. And then maybe just a little bit of a highlight in there. And I'm really quite happy with him, so I'm gonna sign it. And there is your meditative koi fish. I hope you enjoyed painting this one with me as much as I did. This was honestly one of the most relaxing painting experiences I've had in quite a while, especially considering that I was making a video while painting it, which always adds a little extra level of stress. As always, remember that if you would like to share your finished version with me, make sure you follow me on Instagram and you can tag me at Painting with Jane. A huge thank you to my awesome sponsor, Fredericks, who provided me with the excellent canvas pad that I used for today's video. If you're looking for an economical way to try out Fredericks canvas, I highly recommend these canvas pads. They are my absolute new favorite product, especially since Vince and I will be doing some traveling this summer. These are going to be the perfect way for me to keep making art while we're on the road. And thank you to all of you for watching every week. I'll see you next time.